Um, this has been an interesting week. Um, do you ever have those, those weeks, those times in your life where um, the, the, the sequence of events begin to take place, you see them coming, you make all the appropriate preparations, but there's just things you can't foresee that happen. I've had one of those weeks. Um, my lovely wife um, is, she's left me um, just for the weekend. Um, she'll be back this evening, but um, she gets things prepared for me when she goes away to make sure that I have all the right stuff to eat. And I've been a fairly good boy in eating the stuff that she put together for me and, and all of that. But as most of you know, I'm, I'm a bit of an extrovert. I, I really love being around people and feel most comfortable uh, in a crowd. And um, with Lynn gone, um, that has been taken away from me a little bit because, well, when you're home, I'm the only one in the house, and you rattle around in the house. I just don't like it. Uh, last night, um, as I was going to bed, I chose... I believe, a wrong program to watch. It was a nice police drama type show that I watch all of the time. And, and anyhow, um, I very seldom dream, um, or at least I very seldom remember a dream that I had. This morning about 2 a.m., um, apparently uh, I had a dream. And in the dream, there was someone trying to break into my house, and my lovely wife who I found out later was my pillow, was laying beside me. And so I heard something, got up to take care of it or see what it was like a lot of us gentlemen do. And there was a person in my house, and he attacked me, and I screamed. Well, when I woke up because I screamed, um, I think that's why I remembered the dream that I was having, because I was still screaming. And so I just went ahead and finished a scream because it was a good one. Hoped that my neighbors were, were fast asleep and no one was close. Got up and walked around the house, which is just a natural thing for you to do to kind of, whew, so I can go back to sleep because it was just a dream, right? Well, we're remodeling the basement and out in the garage we have a lot of stuff packed up and it's high um, and that kind of a thing. And I'm walking around and turning, not really turning lights on, but kind of looking around to make sure everything's okay so I can take a breath and go back to sleep. Now, I don't know if we have mice or rats or whatever it happens to be, but out in the garage, um, as I opened the door and stuck my head out, a box fell. What's the chances? <clears throat> things happen that are often out of our control. Uh, sometimes they make us a little nervous. Sometimes they make us jump. Sometimes they just make us think in areas that we wouldn't naturally think. But we're all on, on, this, on this road of life, this path that we are to travel. And as such, even with the unexpected, you know, there are, there are things that we can make preparations for ahead of time, and even when those sudden instances that we're not planned come, we're able to take them in stride. And obviously, I'm here this morning. Uh, the box that fell really wasn't all that important, and it didn't seem as though anything broke. Um, and life is wonderful. I, my sleep was interrupted, um, but uh, it took a moment after I was able to breathe once again, praised the God that loves us so much, that watches over us, protects us, cares for us, and, and acknowledged that I rely way more on Him than anything else and was able to soon go back to sleep and catch a few more hours before this morning. What is our anchors? What are the things that we can always rely on uh, in our lives? Well, that was just a free gratis. I thought I'd throw that in there this morning. A couple of announcements that I wanted to bring uh, to your attention. The Women's Bible Study is meeting on Wednesday mornings at 11.30. Uh, somewhere between 11.30 and 12, they get rolling in there here till 1 o'clock or so, and, and the kids play, and they have a Bible study, a time together, and so uh, that continues on. Uh, softball team is playing uh, on Thursday evening at 6.15 uh, at 
the Vineyard Church, the Four Square, uh, there where we always do. If you'd like to come out and watch, that would be great. We won our game last week, and, and so we're all excited. Um, this coming Saturday, um, our denomination gets together uh, once a year, well, our region, the Great Lakes region, uh, will be up in the Fellowship Hall. Um, we're going to do it online. Now, we've opened up our fellowship hall and invited our sister churches uh, to come and be part of that, Um, and some of them have kind of acknowledged that they're going to try and come, uh, and so that there'll be more than just us, but would encourage you, if this is something you're interested in, there will be teaching, there will be some discipleship, there will be some breakout sessions with some topics for us to discuss and talk about, Um, and that'll be on Saturday, this coming Saturday, October the 3rd, from 10 o'clock in the morning, and we generally finish up about 3 in the afternoon. Uh, also, I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest, there's some business that takes place too. Um, we've condensed that um, and some of the reports um, so that it would be much more palatable uh, watching things on a screen, uh, but uh, those business things will uh, be part of that. There'll be some voting uh, as well, and um, if you're just coming along to kind of join in with that, when the voting and all the boring stuff takes place, um, I promise there will be coffee. So life is wonderful. Uh, And so we're putting that together. If you're interested in coming, would ask that you let me know. Um, We're going to provide lunch for everybody that comes. And so uh, the ladies are kind of putting that together, and um, as much as possible, we can give them uh, an estimate on how many folks will be here for that on Saturday. So please let me know if that's something you'd like to be part of. Also, you probably noticed on the way in, we're doing a canned food drive for Inez, Kentucky, and the, the cans are mounting, the cereal boxes are multiplying, and uh, it's just great, uh, the response that we've had thus far. Uh, this will continue on uh, until the second Sunday of October. I believe that's the 11th, and so keep that in mind, and then uh, we'll be loading them, uh, that food up and taking it down to Inez, Kentucky. Um, For offering, Uh, we're not passing the plate, but we do have offering bins available on the Welcome Center. You can slip uh, your offering in there. You can also send it to the church, or you can give online through our website, and that will take a a credit card or a debit card, and you can do it that way. And so uh, keep that in mind. Next Sunday, we are going to have communion together. Um, And uh, in an effort to try and uh, keep things as good as possible with wearing masks and CDC uh, regulations, we have gone ahead and purchased uh, self-serve uh, communion packets. And so um, when you come in, you'll receive one next Sunday. Um, it's, it's about this big. Um, on, if you turn the cup upside down, you tear that side off. There's a piece of bread in there and turn it over and tear the top side off, and that's the communion cup. Uh, And so everyone will have their own. Uh, Nothing will be passed around uh, so that we can uh, keep this as straightforward as possible. And we'll be doing that both uh, inside here, and then we'll be doing that at the drive-in service as well and handing those out. And so uh, keep that in mind for next Sunday. I have a couple of prayer requests. Uh, continue member Roger, it's good to have him with us, but as he continues to recuperate, uh, keep him in your prayers. Bob Gilmore is looking to have uh, a pacemaker put in, uh, probably not for another month or so, but keep Bob in your prayers. Um, there is a mistake in the bulletin. Um, there is a gentleman by the name uh, in the bulletin of Scott Franks. Um, the last name is not Franks, it's Dessenbach. Uh, this would be... Nancy Marty's brother. It says it right there. Nancy Marty's brother in your prayers. Um, He uh, is doing better. He is home from the hospital um, and kind of a little more solid. But if you could change the name from Scott Franks to Scott Dessenbaugh. Uh, And then uh, we received this morning um, from Del Hackett. Actually, we received it from Shirley Hackett because Del wouldn't call and tell us. But his heart is, um, uh, what do they call it, defibrillation. He's got an irregular heartbeat, uh, and that has come back. And so he is in the hospital this morning. Uh, keep Del in your prayers, and then also keep um, Bud Vaughn uh, in your prayers. It's a family of Alita Carter. 
Uh, he's having open heart surgery on Thursday. Any others? Well, let's pray together. Our Father and our God, we, we come before you acknowledging that you are God and we are not. And as such, Lord, we, we live in this world, we, we, we work, we endeavor, we put forth effort, but we acknowledge that it all comes from you and to you it all returns. And so, Lord, we're thankful for what you've done for your love for us is so great that you sent your one and only Son to come and to live upon this earth and to give his life as a sacrifice that, that our sin, our rebellion, might be forgiven and we could put back, be put back in a right relationship with you. And Lord, we give you thanks for all that you do, that you're always there when boxes fall, when dreams assail, when emergencies come and when sadness arrives as well as when success and, and joy comes, you are there. And Lord, we give you thanks that we can always reach out to you that you hear us when we call, and Lord, you respond. We don't always like the answer, and we ask that you would just continue to work with us to build us up, but, but Lord, just help us to understand more and more your ways and less of our ways. And Lord, we ask that you would be with those folks that we've mentioned. There was a list of names, and Lord, we just ask that you would touch and heal and give strength and be with Bob and Roger and Scott and Dell and Bud. Lord, many others that are on our hearts this morning that are in need of your touch. There are loved ones that don't know you as Savior. And Lord, we, we want to be able to live our lives in such a way that they can see the difference that you've made and be drawn to you. There are those in our world that are struggling, that are pushing you away when they should be drawing closer. And we ask, Lord, that you would put us in situations and provide words within our, within our hearts and our mouths, Lord, that would draw them closer to you. Lord, we want to see heaven full. And we just desire to serve you. And Lord, we just ask that you would be here and be part of our service this morning as we worship you, as we lift your name, as we listen to your word that you would build us up and give us hope. Lord, continue to walk with us. And all these things we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. This time we'll sing a couple of songs. Uh, Winnie, are you going to come and help us sing this morning? No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Good morning, everybody. You're able, would you like to stand and let's sing together our first hymn, number 779, I'll Fly Away. Well, these days we're going to all fly away. Next song, number 499. I will sing the wondrous story. Hopefully that song is in our hearts all the time.
Thanks, John, for coming this morning. Uh, John Wood and Lynn are both out of the area, and so John came in to help us out uh, this morning, and now he's going to head down to Sunday school class. And so uh, just thank you very much for, for being here. Our scripture for this morning is taken from Proverbs as we continue on uh, this, this path um, We've got this week and, and next week still uh, on the path as we look at Andy Stanley's bat book with that title. And just kind of looking at Proverbs are those wise sayings, uh, part of the wisdom literature that God gave us through his word. Uh, King Solomon uh, being the author of most of the book of Proverbs. And, and often I know even myself as I've read through the book of Proverbs, sometimes it gets a little bit disjointed and, it, and it's hard to keep on track, you know, it, just because it bounces around a little bit. And I just wanted to take a few, a few weeks as we, we look at the book of Proverbs because it seems to me that we all are on a path and the path that we're on leads someplace. And the difficulty that I see in our modern world is that we can acknowledge we're on a path, we can acknowledge that our path goes someplace, but we're not always sure where it's going to end up. And even sometimes when we have a pretty good idea of where the path will end up that we're on, we're unwilling to get off said path. And we're going to look a little bit this morning at that. So let's bow now let's look at our scripture this morning from Proverbs uh, chapter 15, verse 22, and it says this, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. So this morning, um, this is not my little sheet that has my notes on it. This is. <clears throat> that looks much better. Um, one of the most difficult things in life is, is to know or to find out those things that we don't know. Because there's so much in life that, that we operate with, but we really can't always tell 
where it's going to lead us. And, and oftentimes in our circle of friends, we have our other individuals that are walking in the same direction usually, um, and we get our advice from said friends, and the problem is they don't have any idea where they're going. I mean, because they're not there yet. I mean, wouldn't we want advice? Wouldn't we want input from individuals that have been to the destination that we're trying to get to so that they can look back and tell us the path that led to that destination. And most often we get advice from people that are around us, people that we're friends with, people that are in our same peer group, and the reality is they haven't been there. It's kind of like when you're lost looking to the guy in the back seat and saying, can you take me there? And for them to say, oh, sure, turn right. Well, where does it go? Haven't the slightest idea. But it feels like a right would be a good direction to go. And, well, you go down there and turn right. But nobody knows where you're going to end up. You just hope. And all too often, that's kind of how we work in this world. We, we make calls, we, we kind of make decisions, but do we really, or are we wi really willing to get help all along the way? So this morning, I have a couple things that are reasons that, uh, that I've seen that we don't seek good advice. One, we think we already know what we need to know. We get this impression in our head that, that we're the ones that really know what's going on and where we're headed and how to do it. And, and just because everybody else has gone down this road and failed, we'll be able to get it right. Um, we're the exception to the rule, and, and we have an all-new plan that will definitely work where others have failed miserably. We think we already know everything that we need to know, so there's no sense getting any advice. But not only that, sometimes it just it feels better to have people think we know where we're going rather than to let them know that we don't have a clue. So often we put on that facade. We, we put on, well, um, uh, a friend of mine says we put on our plastic Jesus and go to church every Sunday and pretend that everything's okay when really our life is going down the tubes, and we would even offer advice for other people if they would ask, but the reality is we're just not sure where we need to go, what we need to do, and there's major problems in our lives. And third, we don't seek advice because it's too much work to figure out how to get it. I mean, we really have to put forth effort if we're really going to find out where the good advice is. You know, um, it, it, it's funny. We, we live in this unique world where we gather together on Sunday mornings. And when we gather together on Sunday morning, we, we pretty much have people of all ages um, that are part of our, our congregation, people that have been through a lot, and they would be there to, to give us advice if we would tap on the shoulder. I mean, those that have raised their children and their children are, are doing well would be individuals that I would think newlyweds and those with young children would tap on the shoulder and say, what was the secret to raising your children because they've turned out great, and I want my kids to turn out great. So how do, we, how do I do that? And wow, that sounds to me like a, like a free supper. I mean, you know, it's just, <laughs> let's sit down and talk. We'll walk through that. But, but we think that it's so much work to, to get that advice that we, we don't bother seeking it out. We don't seek out wise counselors because it's easier to get advice from our friends. As we mentioned a little bit ago, it's easier to ask our friends who really don't know what it's like to raise your children. They only know what it's like to raise, you know, up to a six-year-old or a five-year-old or whatever it happens to be. They know how to do that because, well, they've been there, and if you've got a good five-year-old, maybe there's some practices to follow. But in raising teenagers, it's really not going to be helpful. 
we just get advice from those who are nearby rather than those who are experts and have a proven track record. It's also easier to follow the herd. Well, if everybody else is doing it, wouldn't it make sense to kind of join in and just go along? If, if everybody is headed this direction, it must be right. Um, and so you just follow the herd kind of doing this from time to time to make sure the herd is still with you as you slowly walk towards the cliff, as we know the story of lemmings. Uh, when one walk goes over the cliff, all the rest of them follow right behind. And we don't seek advice from wise counselor because it's easier to copy what our parents did. <clears throat> There's a, a reality that, that we, we turn around and we, we look and we're doing the same thing that we know didn't work because maybe we didn't like our upbringing and it, and it was very difficult to overcome, but yet we find ourselves doing the exact same things with our own children and we expect them to turn out differently. Andy Stanley writes in his book, he says, I'm consistently amazed at how resistant folks are to take their clues from people who are where they want to be. But I'm even more amazed at how quick the average person is to borrow a page or two from someone who's never been where he wants to be. Well, how about parents who parent like their parents and wonder why their kids are turning out the same way they did? And then there are couples who treat each other the same way they saw their moms and dads treat each other and wonder why they're just as unhappy as their parents are. These folks have a good idea of where they want to be, but are content to follow a map used by folks who've never been here. This happens all the time amongst my friends. The great thing about having friends who share your season of life is that you have so much in common. But the downside to that is they aren't much further down the road of life than you are. Friends are great for friendship, but they aren't always great for advice giving. And often it is not their advice that gets, uh, gets us into trouble. It's the assumptions we've made based on what we observe about our friends. There are assumptions that, that become a map that we inadvertently follow. Call this herd assumption. And it happens when, well, it's kind of like when you're mortgaged to the hilt driving two leased vehicles and applying for a home equity line of credit and it can't be all bad because everybody I know is doing the same exact thing. Everybody you know works 60 hours a week and sees their family uh, priority only on weekends, then it must work out somehow. The problem, of course, is that everybody's headed for a similar destination at which no one has yet arrived. It feels safe, and everyone can't be wrong. Uh, but it's not safe. By the time it becomes obvious that each of these three decisions leads to undesirable destination. It's too late to do anything about it. So how do we do this? I mean, <clears throat> let's be honest. I, I've outlined a whole bunch of stuff that, that, that we, all, we all have done. It's all been part of our lives. But how are we going to end up where we really want to end up? I mean, because we know we're on a path, and our path goes someplace, and are, do we, how do we look down that path far enough? And is the path that we're on going to take us where we want to go? I mean, so much in our world, we, 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 we did financial peace uh, university. And, and as we did that, there were uh, principles, biblical principles that we are to use for doing our finances. And when you follow those principles, it's amazing some of the things that begin to happen in your life. And I know personally, as I put these principles into practice in my life, there's been some dramatic change. Um, and, and, and yeah, most of it for, for the better in the long haul. I know where I want to go. I know where I want to be. And so, okay, here's the road that I have to walk. Here are the things that I have to do now so that I can be doing these things later. I can, I can see that, and we walk down, down that road. But so many times, and prior to, to going through financial peace, it was just trying to do what I thought my parents were doing or did that maybe got them in the right place, but I'm not sure. 
and, and you kind of wander in the wilderness. And I, I don't want us to be wandering in the wilderness. I want us to be able to see the path and where it's going to take us so that we can do like we talked last week. Do we stay on that path because it's the right path or is it time to change? And, and change is difficult but necessary. So one of the things that really are going to help us to be able to make those changes is to be able to seek good counsel. So the first secret in getting good counsel is knowing that you always need it. We always need good counsel. No one gets to the place where they no longer need wise counsel. There's a comedian the other day was playing in a small lounge on the East Coast and President and Mrs. Bush came in, and Mrs. Bush asked the president, what kind of sandwich did he want to order? And the president said, I don't know. The comedian said, at that point, as his waiter, I got to be an advisor to the president. Okay, weak joke, but it gets us there in, in that we never get to the place, even the president of the United States needs good counsel, and that's why he married Mrs. Bush, so that she could point him in the right directions. Everyone needs good counsel through, throughout our lives. Sometimes, and I would hope most of the time, that we would be willing to go and seek that good counsel, but sometimes good counsel must be thrust upon us. We need to have good friends that are willing to come up and tap us on the shoulder and say, you know what? This path that you're on, I don't think it's going to lead you where you want to go, and some things need to change. You know, and that can happen in so many areas of our lives. Are we willing to get good counsel? And secondly, we also need to ask more than one person for advice. Um, I know in my own life, um, there was a time when I was graduating from seminary, and it was time to go to a, a local church and, and, and start uh, being a pastor in that capacity, and and uh, an opportunity came up in, in West Virginia. There was a number of struggles that were going on at the church, and I began to seek counsel. And I went to one professor that I had gotten to know well, and, and I said, hey, I said, here's an opportunity, and I laid it all out, and, and I was all excited for him to tell me to go for it, and he said, um, turn them down. I said, what? He said, turn them down. You don't want to go there. He said, they're going to eat you alive. Don't go there. I said, oh, well, that really wasn't what I wanted to hear. And he said, well, I know that, but you don't want to go there. So I went to another professor. He told me the same thing. So I went to a third professor. And the third professor told me the same thing. So I went to my wife. And she said, maybe we should pray some more. We continued to seek good counsel, not looking for the answer that we wanted to hear, but to seek wise counsel. And I went back to the three professors and began to talk with them a little deeper, and we revealed some more things and some of their concerns. And over the course of, of a couple of months, um, even we, in talking with one another and these three advisors, as well as my current pastor and especially especially my wife, things began to turn, and it seemed to be the thing that God was leading us to do. Proverbs eleven fourteen says, For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but many advisors make victory sure. Solomon inserts something before advisors in this, and if you want to check that out, it's Proverbs eleven fourteen. He says, Many advisors, not one, but many advisors. It's something that's going to sound real obvious is that we need to touch base with a number of, of individuals to help us find the path and, and what that path will lead us to down the road. You see, all too many times we go out and search for somebody to agree with us, and, and then we, we take that and run with it, rather than processing a thread. Three professors tell me not to do it, and it just scared the daylights out of me. 
which was probably the best thing that could have happened at that moment. And as we walked down the road together and shared the situation as much as the information that I could get, and, and they, uh, we talked and, and in sharing and talking, we began and were able to put together a plan. Um, and I actually took the plan to the church before arriving there and said, this is kind of what I'm thinking. Is this the direction that you're wanting to go? And we were able to get on the same page. Many advisors make victory a sure thing. Third, not letting pride keep you from admitting what you don't know. Proverbs 13.10 says, Pride only breeds quarrels, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Our pride is probably the number one thing that keeps us on the wrong path keeps us from doing what we really should be doing. We allow our pride to take over and we no longer are able to see what's coming. Proverbs 12, 15 says, The way of a fool seems right to him, but a wise man listens to advice. The way of a fool, the path. The path of a fool seems right to him. So often we're unwilling to listen to good advice. I remember as a teenager and how many times my dad looked at me and said, look, you're a good boy. You're doing well for yourself. You know, it's okay to actually use the intellect that God has given you from now and then. He's told me over and over that, Lord, you're more than what you are. And not only that, he also told me several times when there were things going on in my life, you need to check that because I think that where you're headed is not where you're going to want to be. And most of the time, I just figured he was an old guy with old-fashioned perspectives until I crashed and burned on a repeating basis and began to find out just how smart my father was. See, we, we run into that a lot in the world that we have. Our, our pride wells up and we think we know better. And, and the wisest man that ever lived was Solomon. And Solomon was coming to the end of his time upon the earth and he could see uh, that the end was nearing and that he was going to have to turn his throne over uh, to the next king. And he looked at his sons and he came upon his son Rehoboam and he kind of was grooming him and preparing him to be the next king. And if you look up um, 1 Kings, I didn't write it down. I think it's in your bullet. Oh, Second Chronicles 10, uh, 5. I'm not going to read the story this morning, but I'm going to share kind of what happened. And Solomon was preparing Rehoboam to be king. The time came and Solomon's life was ended and Rehoboam was about to be uh, coronated as the king over, over all uh, of Solomon's territory. And in the, as that was going on, a group... A group of individuals got together and they kind of appointed a spokesperson, Jeroboam, to go to the king and say, look, we are willing to be your servants going into the future if you'll lighten the load. Your dad, King Solomon, was a great man, but he put a lot of, of taxation on us because of all of the building projects and we need a break. And if you'd be willing to kind of give us a little bit of a break, we'll be your servants. Now, Rehoboam, well, Rehoboam said, okay, um, let me think about that. You see, and then he did all the right stuff. He took time to make the decision. And then he went and talked to his advisors, those who advised uh, King Solomon, and he went and talked to them, and, and they told him, look, here, here's what, you, you should actually do this. Lighten their load, and they'll be your servants forever. It will bring the kingdom together, and you'll be able to reign as king. <coughs> and then Rehoboam, well, in so many words, I don't think he liked what they had to say, so he went and talked to his friends. And as he talked to his friends, they told him, look, don't do that. These people need to know that you're king. So go tell them not only are you going to keep what's been going on, you're going to increase it. 
that they might know who is king in Israel. Well, Jeroboam took them back to uh, the people that he represented, and they talked about it, and they decided that they didn't want Rehoboam to be their king. And the split uh, between Judah and Israel occurred. Rehoboam was over uh, Israel and Jerusalem, and, um, well, Jehoiakim. Jeroboam was then king over the rest of Israel. Uh, Ten tribes went with Jeroboam, and just the one tribe went with Rehoboam. And then there was the lost tribe um, that was, uh, yeah. And so because Rehoboam didn't listen to wise counsel, then he, not knowing what he didn't even know, and having pride come in and be such a, a, a big part of that, it severed the kingdom in half. And all that Solomon and all that David had put together was now divided in half. And basically it comes down to pride. Never mind that his advisors were older and wiser, never mind that they had been there to help his father make wise decisions and become the wisest and richest king uh, of his day, never mind that they had actually gone where Rehoboam wanted to go. But because of all of that, he pushed it aside. And he didn't listen to good counsel. He let pride get in his road. And the kingdom was divided. Forth taking counsel from those who have been where you want to go. We're all on a path, and we're all headed down, down the road. And no matter where we're at in our hearts, no matter where we're at in our lives, this path that we're on leads someplace. Do we really know where it's going? Are we willing to take counsel from those who've actually been where we want to go? Uh, do we have the wherewithal to actually go and to look? So many times it seems to me that, that we as people, it's, it's good to talk, and here's where I want to end up. And, and I know I need to be on this road to get from where I am to where I, I want to be, um, but I'm not going to go and talk to people who are actually there to make sure. I'm just going to assume I know the road. Now, I don't know. This might be a guy thing, but... I hate to ask for directions. I am the epitome of all of those cartoons that you see on the internet about guys who get lost and won't ask directions. I mean, I'll stop at a gas station and fill up with more gas before so that I have plenty of gas to find where I'm supposed to be rather than ask for directions. There are times when that GPS unit on, on the dash or on my phone, I shut it off and put it away because the thing drives me crazy. Sometimes that ekes over into other aspects of, of our lives, and, and we're, we're not willing to, to seek out good advice. We're not willing to go and find someone who has been where we want to be or who is where we want to be that can say, well, here's the things you need to do in order to get there. I mentioned Dave Ramsey and financial peace, and he outlines and he, he says, here's the road. And, and we can listen to that, and we can go through. We can even get a little certificate at the end that says, I've been through Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. We can tell our friends how great, it, how, how great the course was and, and, and how the coordinators were just amazing. And we can go on and on and on and on and on. But the reality is if we don't take the counsel, if, if we just know the steps but don't put them into practice, if we leave it aloof, we're never going to end up where we want to go. If we never put those things into place, we're not going to end up where we really want to be. So we need to find those individuals that are there and then follow the path. And not only is it financial, but it's spiritual. So many times in the modern church, we think, well, here's so-and-so, and what a great saint they are, and boy, if I, if I ever really need prayer, I'm going to make sure I go to so-and-so and have them pray for me because they have God's ear. i got a question for you. Why don't you get God's ear? 
wouldn't it be wise then to, to want to be like that so that when you pray, God listens, or at least it seems that way? And then how did you get to this place? And, and talk with them to, to put the spiritual disciplines in place to be the person that God really wants you to be. And what does that mean? And how does that work it out? It's kind of like going to Financial Peace University and, and never trying to get out of debt. I mean, I know all the principles. I just, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not into that. I know it's, it's like live like nobody else now so that later I can live like nobody else. Well, I'd like to live like nobody else later, but the now I want to live like I want to anyway. And so I'm not willing to do the sacrifice. I'm not willing to put it into place. So why did you go? And in the same way, in our lives, in our spiritual lives, you know, are, are we willing to take the steps to get to where we want to be? Are we willing to take wise counsel from those who have been down that path to go where we really want to go. Pastor was meeting with his small group and they met every month and they had been doing so for about three years and, and, and they had the same uh, waitress uh, every Saturday morning and her name was Summer and she would come and she would wait on their table uh, diligently and she always did a good job and, and they got to know Summer over the course of the three years that they were there and while she was the waitress there she actually finished up her college degree and the one morning they started a conversation on where are you going to go from here because her college degree was such um, it wasn't in being a waitress and so how are you going to take the next step? And she said, well, I don't know. She said, I seem to be working when, I, when, when the right time to go out and look for jobs are. And, and they went back and forth, and they said, well, she, just ask her, you know, what kind of job are you looking for? And, and would you be willing to do some volunteer time in order to kind of get some experience? And she said, sure. Well, another guy that was around the table, heard the conversation, and said, hey, he said, I, I have opportunity at my company if you'd like to come. He said, uh, interview for a volunteer position, maybe we could work something out. And so uh, they set it up uh, after breakfast was over. And the next, the next uh, Saturday, uh, a month later, when they all came together, they had a different waitress. And everybody was looking around for summer. Where's summer? Well, Summer doesn't work here anymore, and they ask why. And, well, the guy who she volunteered for spoke up, and she said, well, she came for an interview for a volunteer position, and, and after we talked with her, we, we hired her on the spot. You see, when we're willing to take counsel from those individuals that are a little further down the road, it's amazing the things that can happen. Are we willing to do just that. Some of us ponder why we fail so often. Sometimes it's because our plans fail because we've sabotaged them. Sometimes they fail because they weren't all that good. In, in the beginning, Proverbs 15.22 says, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. No one gets to the place where he or she doesn't need counsel. To live as if you don't is to deceive yourself. Solomon's story ends in tragedy. The wisest man in the world did not shelter him from unwise decisions, and he didn't take his own advice. And as you probably are aware, Solomon began to follow other gods. And who knows where his eternal destiny ended up, but we know he was disobedient in his role as a king with so many wives, so many concubines, so much pull in the wrong direction to follow idols. You never reach your full potential without tapping into the wisdom of others to guide and to direct, to help us avoid the pitfalls and to actually aim to the place where we really want to be. Are we willing to walk down that road? When we think of Jesus and his life upon this earth, he consistently used the phrase, follow me, 
follow me. Walk behind me. Walk the path that I'm walking. Come to me, he says. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. For the yoke I will place upon you. On the road we will walk together. That path is easy, and the burden I will give you will seem light. For I am hum- gentle and humble of heart. And as you follow me, you will find rest for your souls. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your ongoing love for us. And Lord, we just ask that you would continue to be with us each and every day. And Lord, that you would assist us to be willing to reach out, to get wise counsel. Help us to have a discerning heart. Help us to to listen with pride put in check that we might be able to, to hear those principles that will lead us into the future. Lord, help us to follow you. And Lord, to join one with another, to assist in giving and receiving of advice, to hear from those who are where we would like to be and what the path is like that leads there. Be with us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to go ahead and end with a hymn. Uh, We're going to sing Send the Light. Uh, Let's stand together as we do so. As we go from this place, may God's hand continue to be upon us, to guide and to direct, to assist us that we might open up the counsel of those, not only that are around us, but those that are at the place that we would desire to be, that we might hear the path that they're on and follow. Amen.